Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the jinx and the television industry. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying EDUCAS A-level media studies as it is currently one of the optional set TV products for study on that specification. The Jinx is produced by HBO Documentary Films in conjunction with Blumhouse um, and HBO you need to understand quite a bit of background information about them as a company. HBO is a subsidiary of Time Warner which in itself is a subsidiary of the parent company AT&T. HBO is a pay TV service in America, so people subscribe to them. Um, they both make programmes and they are then able to distribute and exhibit them on their own streaming service. HBO is available in over 50 countries and they have 127 million subscribers. So they're really quite a big company in themselves. They've had a range of successful programmes in the past. So things like The Wire, Game of Thrones and True Blood and all of those programmes give um, HBO a certain sense of quality about them as a company and that might attract pre-sold audiences of HBO as a company. Some people might well choose to watch The Jinx just because it is made by HBO and therefore they're expecting a certain level of quality. HBO is a subsidiary of Time Warner. Time Warner is quite a large company, it's diversified. Um, they operate in terms of film, TV, mobile gaming, music, video on demand. They're able to distribute their own products as well, so they're vertically integrated. Um, some of the other subsidiaries that Time Warner own are things like CNN, the Cartoon Network, Warner Brothers, obviously very big film company, and DC Comics. So Time Warner in itself has got a lot of subsidiary companies with HBO being just one of them. HBO has roughly around 6,000 staff and Time Warner, as its kind of mini parent company, um, has 25,000 staff. So you're looking at very large companies involved in this. The parent company that owns HBO is AT&T and AT&T are huge. They're one of the world's largest communication companies. It brings in about $181 billion of revenue every single year. So massive amounts of money. They operate across a variety of media industries, including TV, telephones, internet, films, publishing, news, video games, theme parks, etc. Um, they themselves have 230,000 staff across the world. Um, they actually bought Time Warner in 2016. So this idea of horizontally integrating, of buying out other companies that perhaps might be your competition and bringing them under your own umbrella brand so that you can continue to make profit um, and reduce your risks from your competitors. The director was called Andrew Jarecki. Um, he had previously worked on several successful products which would have perhaps brought in pre-sold audiences from those shows. He'd also done in particular a film about Durst who is the subject of the jinx and so perhaps people who'd learned about the Durst case um, from his previous film might well be drawn into watching this TV documentary. One of the other writers, Mark Smerling, has won Oscars before for his work and that might bring in people who are looking for something quality and culturally acclaimed. The same goes for the third writer, Zachary Stewart Ponty, who again is an award winning writer. So having all these people involved in the jinx brings in those pre-sold audiences and also helps to market the TV series. The documentary becomes something that people see as high quality because of these people involved in it. The use of this crew, the use of the fact that Jarecki had previously worked on the film about Robert Durst, um, it adds to this feeling that perhaps this documentary is almost part of a franchise about the Durst case, which perhaps reduces risk overall in the company's minds. It makes it feel as though there is going to be a guaranteed audience for this. The fact that this is part of the kind of true crime genre, again, helps to reduce the risk. It's a very popular genre right now. We've had a lot of series in the last few years, things like Making of a Murderer, amongst others, where people clearly have got very involved in real life crime cases through TV documentaries. The fact that they were able to release this on HBO and control the distribution of it so that you can only watch it through HBO and through their mobile app, HBO Go, 
um, it could, that controlled release of the product helps to reduce the risk as well. However, there were some risks the programme makers had to take into consideration. The fact that this documentary was going to need a very high budget to be able to do all the things they needed to do, that adds to some of the risk. The fact that they're going to release it on a streaming site, um, again, adds to the risk as well, because, you know, that often, you know, digital products are often easier to pirate. Um, so, you know, it's it swings and roundabouts. The company have to weigh up the risks versus the benefits. The fact that it was on a streaming pay TV site, HBO and HBO Go, as well as making it difficult to control in terms of piracy, it also makes it difficult to control in terms of audience and their age. The Jinx as a show is quite graphic. The documentary focuses quite a lot on wounds and injuries and violence and does quite a lot of reconstructions focusing on the murders themselves. Um, and again, being on a streaming site makes it very hard to control who's watching that because a lot of young people have access to streaming sites on their phones now. They did launch a very in-depth marketing campaign for this to try and reduce the risk and maximise their profits. They created a trailer that had lots of enigma in it, lots of unanswered questions, things that would make the audience want to watch the whole documentary. And they released this onto YouTube to ensure it was shareable for other audiences to attract a global audience as well. The trailer clearly focuses on the fact that this is a true story. Uh, it focuses on the spectacle of the crimes as well, so it makes it feel very sensationalised and dramatic. The HBO branding is all over the marketing materials, such as the poster and the trailer. And again, that helps to draw in those audiences who might be fans of HBO's previous work. The crew from the documentary appeared on many TV programmes, such as CBS's Spot on This Morning, ABC Good Morning America, um, all to promote the documentary. So talking about the series, talking about the crime, promoting the show. That helps to target perhaps a slightly older audience, those audiences who are still watching traditional TV. They also did newspaper articles for similar reasons. So lots of interviews with newspapers, new coverage of the old crime case as well, all helped to promote the show. Use of social media too, people on Facebook discussing what they thought would happen with the case, the show dropping teasers about what was gonna happen. Um, in the next episode. So the use of social media is a great way of drawing in those younger, more modern and global audiences. The HBO website was designed to promote the Jinx as well, obviously features a lot of information about quotes about the show, reviews about how good it is, the awards it won as well. So a real focus on this idea of quality and, uh, you know, um, great reviews creating this idea of word of mouth. There was even a subreddit set up, which is unofficial, but it was a great way of marketing the show where people were discussing what they thought would happen, who they thought had really committed the crimes, did they think he was guilty, etc. So, you know, fans themselves were actually doing a lot of word of mouth marketing of the show, which obviously the producers were very happy by. One of the best pieces of marketing that happened for the show was something that the producers didn't necessarily plan, although they may have had a bit of a hand in, the fact that Robert Durst was arrested uh, for the crime the night before the final episode was aired on television. It created a huge publicity storm and even people who hadn't watched the rest of the documentary before were suddenly finding out about it in newspapers and on TV news. So um, it was the best marketing the producers could have hoped for. Um, and some people felt the producers had a little bit of a hand in this, the fact that they may have held back certain bits of evidence uh, that the police needed to make arrests um, and then handed them over to the police just in time for the police to make the arrest before the final episode. Um, that brings into question a whole I the whole idea of ethics surrounding TV documentaries and the regulation of television. Obviously the producers, writers and directors deny that they withheld information and evidence, but uh, it does seem slightly suspicious that they seem, the documentary certainly implies that they knew about particular evidence um, and didn't hand it over straight away. So perhaps this was quite a cunning way of them controlling the marketing for the Jinx. So that was my easy to understand guide to the Jinx 
and industry. Don't forget to check out my channel for lots of other Educast A-level relevant material, as well as uh, set text, keywords and theories that might be very useful for you. If there are any videos that you would like that I don't yet already have, please drop me a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.